Hi everyone, I hope everyone's okay. So today I'm just going to be doing a short video and um, breaking down the short division method, also known as a bus stop. Bus stop is a really handy way um, to divide numbers that don't necessarily jump out at us in our times tables. So if I said how many twos go into 16, I can count up in my two times tables. That's quite easy. But for longer numbers, this method is really handy. So for our first example, I've got 1,705 divided by 5. That would take me a really long time to count up in my 5 times tables to get to this number. So instead, I'm going to put it into bus stop. And I'll be using a different coloured pen just to show exactly where I carry over um, with my workings out. This is really helpful to make sure we're accurate. So all we do, we put our number that we're dividing into on the outside and our larger number in the middle of the bus. So this is our bus stop. And then we just follow it along. So we see how many fives go into one. None. One is smaller than five. So I'm going to move over my one. And now I'm looking at how many fives go into 17. I can now use my five times table. So I've got five 10, 15, 20, 20 is too big, so we've got 3, but it wasn't 3 exactly, so we stopped at 15, which means that we have 2 moved over. So now I'm looking at how many 5s go into 20. So I can count up again, I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, that's 4 exactly, so nothing is being carried over this time. And then how many fives go into five is just one. So 1,705 divided by five is 341. I went through that quite fast, so I'm going to do a few more examples. So now I'm going to do another example. We've got a longer number here. We've got 92,781 divided by nine. So the number that we're dividing into goes on the outside. So we've got nine here. And then our bus stop, and we've got 9, 2, 7, 8, 1. Just extend this a little bit. So now I see how many 9s go into our first number. So 1 9 goes into 9. And then I move along to our second number. How many 9s go into 2? 0. But I have to remember to carry that 2 over to our next number. So now I've got 27. If we count up in our 9 times tables, 9, 18, 27, that's 3, exactly. So I've got nothing to carry over. If we continue over here, how many 9s go into 8? None. 8 is smaller, so we're going to put a 0, but we're going to carry our 8 over. How many 9s go into 81? If we count up in our 9 times tables again, 9 times 9 is 81 and that goes in exactly. If the bus stop division method is new to you today, I recommend pausing the video here and writing out some questions for yourself to practice. If it's not new, I'm going to be talking through remainders and then how we can put those into a decimal. Okay, so for our next example, we're going to do 3,282 divided by 4. And I've already put that into our bus stop, so remembering that our smaller number goes on the outside. And now we can get started. So how many 4s go into 3, which is 0? And we're going to carry that over. So how many 4s go into now 32? Well, I've wrote out my 4 times tables ready, and 32 is on there exactly. So it's 4 times 8. How many 4s go into 8? Well, that's an easy one. 2. And now, how many 4s go into 2? Well, we can't do that, so we've got 0 remained 2. That was nice and fast and nice and easy. I recommend always writing out your times tables if you're not confident with them. Now, I'm going to see if I can convert this remainder into a decimal. Okay, so now I've rewritten our question with the answer that we've got so far, but we stopped at remainder 2. What we're going to do to turn this into a decimal, we just put decimal place in 
and put a zero, which we can keep going if we need to. And then instead of putting our remainder two up here, we just move it along to our decimal like we were earlier. So now we just see how many fours go into 20, which with our times tables, we know that's five. And now we have no remainders. So we didn't need this last decimal place. And our answer is 820.5. So now we can write our answer, finish the problem. This is more accurate than putting a remainder to. Um, so I recommend doing this when you can. Nice and easy. Let's do one more practice. Okay, so now finally, I'm just going to use the bus stop method, but with a number that we don't usually associate with times tables, like um, 16 or 20. So let's give that a go. Okay, so for this example, we are going to use the number 15. So I've just generated a random number here, divided by 15. And first things, I would always recommend just adding up the number a few times so we've got a list of times tables it takes an extra minute but it makes sure we're as accurate as possible so i always do this so now i can move on to the question so how many 15s go into seven that would be none seven's too small but now how many 15s go into 72 so i'm going to refer to my times tables that i've got here i've only done a few so 75 is too high, 60 is what we're going to have to go to, though. so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, go in here, and don't forget our remainder, so we stopped at 60, we're supposed to go to 72, so that gives us a remainder of 12. So as you can see, I've just squeezed my 12 in here, and we are doing now how many 15s going to 121. So going back to my times tables, there's 120, so I've got 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to put an 8 in here with a remainder of 1. So now this is looking really messy, this is why I like to use another colour. So almost there, how many 15s go into 10? We can't do that, so I'm just going to extend by adding a decimal on. And we need to remember to carry the whole of our 10 over here. So how many 15s go into 100? And 105 is too large. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Remainder 10 again. So I'm going to just carry that over. Um, we've already done this. We've got another 6. And I'm always going to stop at two decimal places. You could keep going um, to get a more accurate answer. But most exam boards and SATs boards wouldn't ask for anything more than this. So our answer is 480.66. Thank you for sticking with me through this. I know I whizzed through lots of different types of questions when we're dividing using the short division method. Um, you're more than welcome to go back and pause and rewatch whichever bits I went through a bit too fast or found a little bit trickier. If you feel like you've grasped that quite well, um, IXL.com has lots of free resources with just a few questions where you can test what you've learned. Hopefully you can apply something new. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to For You and like this video. I will speak to you all again soon. Bye.